as cheaply as possible. Marty is in the competition with his plan to harness the engineering genius of nature. We'll explain his innovations in a minute. But in case you want to check the math of a fisherman scientist, let's hop across the pond to Cambridge University. If we were to reduce emissions to zero tomorrow, not net zero to zero, we're still cooked. Sir David King went from teaching chemistry at Cambridge to a post as the UK's top science advisor and later the country's lead climate negotiator. But after a decade, he realized that geopolitics and oil lobbyists were eating up too much precious time. My own solution is 197 nations will never get agreement on how we have an orderly transition. So he went back to Cambridge, formed the Center for Climate Repair, and now hopes to enlist some very big and powerful partners. And it's all based on a recent understanding of the function of whales in the ocean. The plan is called Marine Biomass Regeneration. And it starts by spraying the deep oceans with gigatons of artificial whale poop. Now, the question is, where does the feces, the artificial feces, come from? Right. I have, that's one of many questions I have, but let's start with that one. He explains that when people drove baleen whales to near extinction, we lost the ocean's biggest fertilizer pumps. And as I learned for an upcoming episode of The Whole Story, one pod can gobble up nutrients from the deep and poop them across hundreds of square miles of ocean surface. Oh, we got poo? Look at that. <laughs> That's the gold. Supercharging the bottom of the food chain. Within three to four days in that area, you might have the whole area covered with phytoplankton. And then within five days of that, that whole area becomes full of fish. And since the biggest can weigh 28 tons, when they die, they take massive amounts of carbon Godzilla to the ocean depths and could be doing millions of dollars worth of carbon removal for free. We would say whaling has to stop completely, but you can catch as much fish as you like because we're going to return the oceans to billions of fish in this process. This idea has been tried before, spraying iron filings, I guess, on oceans. It's been rejected by governments uh, over time. What's new now that gives you confidence that people will accept this? So I believe that the idea of only using iron was uh, wrong. Volcanic ash contains all the nutrients that, that we need. It contains nitrates, phosphates, silicates, and iron. And so we plan to literally use volcanic dust as our artificial whale poop. But to recover in sufficient numbers, whales will need time. And we are out of time. But Sir David thinks we could buy precious years needed for ocean recovery by making clouds, big puffy white ones, to reflect maximum sunlight away from the top of the world. So his team is designing hydrofoil that could sail northern seas unmanned and powered only by the motion of the ocean. He hopes a fleet of these spraying a fine mist of seawater into the sky could create enough marine cloud brightening to turn down the heat just enough to refreeze the Arctic for three months a year. To create a manageable future for humanity. We need deep and rapid emissions reduction. We need to remove excess greenhouse gases, and let's buy time by refreezing the Arctic. Much of Sir Dave's work employs something called biomimicry, the idea that nature is the best engineer. So we should mimic Earth systems at massive scales. And that is Marty's philosophy. This is what's producing, you know, 50% of the oxygen we breathe. Coming up. We'll see how his ideas stack up against the little nation that leads the world in battling carbon Godzilla. Next stop, Iceland.